Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Sri, and I'm so excited to be with you here today to talk about this amazing prayer, the Rosary. It's Mary's month, the month of May, a wonderful time to get closer to Mary, to grow in our Marian devotion. And I can't think of a better prayer than the Rosary for this. You know, there's so many wonderful stories about the Rosary. We hear about the power of the Rosary. It can change lives. It can convert whole nations. It can bring world peace. It could save the family. And yet, if we're honest, I think many of our experiences with the rosary is very different. You know, it, it could be really hard sometime. It could be a, a challenging prayer to pray. It's like the marathon of all Catholic devotions. It keeps going on and on. And now don't get me wrong. I mean, on one hand, it, it's a very basic prayer, right? It consists of our fathers, Hail Marys and Glory Bees. That's like the ABCs of, of Catholic piety. And yet, does this ever happen to you? D does your mind ever wonder when you pray the rosary? You know, you're, you're sitting there, you're praying, and all of a sudden, you're trying to think about that first joyful mystery, but your mind wanders, and you're thinking about, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> or you're thinking about something someone said to you earlier that day. What did she mean by that? And you're like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be thinking about Angel Gabriel and contemplating the mystery of the Annunciation, and, and we feel bad about that, but we get so distracted when we pray the rosary. Another thing that happens is we can sometimes treat the rosary like a chore, like just something we fit in, you know, check off the box, you know, but we treat it like a chore. Our heart's not really into it. And you, you show up at that Catholic event and, you know, they pull out the beads and you're thinking, oh no, not a whole rosary. Maybe they'll just do a decade, <laughs> you know, and, and you feel bad about that because you know, this is supposed to be a beautiful, powerful prayer, but some days our heart isn't as fully into it and you're praying along and it's like, oh no, it's only the second sorrowful mystery. And Every decade really feels like 10 years. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? If you had that experience or, or sometimes you're, you've had a long day, you're busy and you finally sit down, you pull out those beads and what happens? You doze off right in the middle of a Hail Mary. We've all had experiences like this. Uh, and, and if you feel that way, know that you're in good company. I've given this talk to many people, uh, to, to many priests to many religious sisters, contemplative nuns, uh, to bishops with apostolic succession, and they've all admitted that the rosary can be a challenge sometime. What I wanna do in this brief time together is take a look at some wonderful tips from John Paul II, a little bit from Pope Benedict and others on how we can encounter Jesus more in the rosary and, and how we can really grow in our rosary praying. But why don't we begin with a quick Hail Mary together here in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, I'm going to give you one very basic tip here. First, never walk away from the rosary feeling defeated. Never walk away feeling defeated, feeling discouraged. Never walk away feeling like, oh, that, I just didn't accomplish much. That was a waste of time. I, I'm horrible at praying this prayer. You know, we, we have to remember with the wisdom of St. Thomas Aquinas that the intention to pray is itself the beginning of prayer. And, and it's very important. It's a very important part of our prayer life. The intention we bring to our prayer, whether I show up at Mass or my little private time in, in, in Eucharistic Adoration or, or during the Rosary, if I'm really coming with a good intention, Jesus... I really want to give you this time. Jesus, I, I, I want to give you my best. And if your mind wanders, you get distracted, know that you at least gave a good intention. Aquinas says that attention and the, the intention uh, is, is, is the underlying uh, part of our whole prayer life. And we come with a good intention. Even if I lose attention, I still can give something beautiful to God. I give him my heart. I said these words of the rosary, which come from scripture, the, the words are sacred, they're holy. We're giving God something. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, to have a good intention. Uh, when I see my kids, like just today, uh, I had uh, one of my kids draw a little picture for me. And even if the picture isn't like a masterpiece, like that, that uh, Raphael or Caravaggio might draw, uh, you know, it, it's, it could be a bunch of scribbles. But yet, as a father, I rejoice in seeing their heart, their intention, that they want to give their daddy a gift. I'm not all mad. I don't rip up their, their picture and says, oh, this is a terrible drawing. It's not perfect. You know, no, no. I, I see their hearts. And our Heavenly Father sees us as well. That he sees if we really come sincerely, we're coming really trying to pray the rosary well, 
Uh, and even if it doesn't go as well, we're still giving God something beautiful. You know, so if you ever hear those voices in your head, like telling yourself, oh, I stink at this prayer. I don't have time. It's a waste of time. I don't get anything out of it. Uh, I'm horrible at praying the rosary. That's Those voices aren't coming from God. That's from the devil. That's from the enemy because he wants you to stop praying this prayer. He knows how powerful it is. And he'll use even discouragement to keep you from persevering in your rosary praying. So keep praying the rosary even if you get distracted. Second thing, we want to get better at praying this prayer though. If my three-year-old daughter is 18, when she turns 18, and she still can't draw a square or a circle, we have a problem. I want her to mature in her drawing, and God wants you to mature in your rosary praying. So I want to offer you a few thoughts on how we can pray the rosary better. Uh, one has to do with the, the prayer we recite over and over again the most, and that's the Hail Mary. You know, uh, some people may wonder, well, why are you spending all this time with Mary in the rosary? You know, it, this, this is distracting from our relationship with Jesus. Have you heard, especially our Protestant brothers and sisters would, would raise that question. I think it's a fair question. I mean, think about it. You know, if, what do you have in every decade of the rosary? It's one Our Father, followed by 10 Hail Marys, and concluded by a Glory Be. So what's the score at the end of every decade, <laughs> right? What's the score? It's a one point for God the Father, one point for the Holy Trinity, and 10 points for Mary. I mean, from a Protestant perspective, I mean, that seems like a little of, a bit of an imbalance, you Catholics, right? I mean, I mean, if there was a husband that came home from work and, and he said, you know, and, and, and on the weekend, he spent one hour with his wife and one hour with the kids and 10 hours with some other woman, that's not going to go over well in a marriage. So why do you Catholics spend so much time with Mary? Uh, again, I think those are, are fair questions to ask, but I think there's some great answers. Uh, St. John Paul II tells us that the Hail Mary that we pray, this Hail Mary prayer is not only a prayer addressed to Mary, it's really centered on Christ. It's a Jesus prayer. Did you know that? When you pray the Hail Mary, you're praying a Jesus prayer. It's all about Jesus. It's addressed to Mary, but it's all about Jesus. So in other words, I would say if you love Jesus, you want to praise him and you want to grow closer to him, pray the Hail Mary a lot. <laughs> Here's why. Like, think about the Hail Mary. You got two halves of the Hail Mary. You've got the first half where we say, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Uh, where do those words come from? They, it comes from Gabriel and his words to Mary at the Annunciation. And then the first half continues with the words, blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Those words come from Elizabeth. Uh, at, at the visitation scene, she speaks those words to Mary. So the whole first half of the Hail Mary is right there from the Bible. But I want you to see how Christ-centered those words are. And this is a beautiful piece of wisdom from JP2 and his reflection on, on the Hail Mary. He, he says that uh, when we pray the Hail Mary, we're entering the praise of heaven and earth over the mystery of Christ. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about those first words, Gabriel. Imagine being Gabriel. Put yourself in the Archangel Gabriel's shoes. And you're Gabriel, and you're, you've are you been worshiping, praising, adoring the almighty, infinite, all-holy God from the beginning of your existence. And then one day, God tells you, Gabriel, to go all the way down to this little tiny planet called Earth, to this little obscure village named Nazareth, to this tiny, tiny little creature, this woman named Mary, and announce to her that the almighty, all-holy, infinite God you've been loving and adoring from the beginning of your existence is about to become a baby inside of her? <laughs> wow, that would just blow anyone's mind away, right? And in awe over that mystery, what does Gabriel say? Gabriel says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you like, like no one else ever before. Gabriel speaks those words in awe over the mystery of Jesus, the mystery of God becoming man in Mary. How about the next line? Elizabeth. Elizabeth is inspired by the Holy Spirit, the text tells us. She's filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning she has prophetic insight. She knows that Mary is pregnant, and she knows that Mary's pregnant not with any ordinary child, but with the Holy Son of God, and in awe over that mystery of God becoming man in this child in Mary's womb. What does Elizabeth say? Elizabeth says, blessed are you among all women. No one's been blessed like you, Mary. Why? For blessed is the fruit of your womb because of the child you carry. So Elizabeth is praising God for the mystery of becoming this child in Mary, the mystery of Christ. Do you see how these words that we repeat in the Hail Mary over and over again, 
They really do, as John Paul II says, and allow us to enter into the ecstatic praise and wonder of heaven and earth over the mystery of Christ. Heaven represented by Gabriel, earth represented by Elizabeth. Heaven and earth, Gabriel and Elizabeth praising God for becoming man in Jesus Christ inside Mary's womb. As Catholics, we repeat that Hail Mary over and over again so we can enter into the praise of heaven and earth of Gabriel and Elizabeth over the mystery of Christ. Isn't this a Christ-centered prayer? It's a Jesus prayer. That's what the Hail Mary is all about. You know, even the, the, the let's go to the second half of the Hail Mary. Second half of the Hail Mary is, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. What we're doing there is asking Mary to intercede for us, to pray for us. She who said yes to welcoming God in her womb, we ask her to pray for us that we may say yes now and all the way to the hour of our death, that we may allow Christ by grace into our souls. So even this is about Jesus. Mary, help us to, to, to be like you now and at the hour of our death. Amen. But then we come to the very middle of the Hail Mary, what John Paul II called the hinge of the Hail Mary. He also called it the center of gravity for the Hail Mary. And what is that? It's the holy name of Jesus. Yes, the holy name of Jesus. That's what's at the very middle of the Hail Mary. Jesus' name, which is, is so, so powerful, right? The Bible tells us that when two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in our midst. The Bible tells us that at Jesus' name, the heavens and the earth and everything under the earth will bow at Jesus' name. You know, so, so we, we want to pray this name and speak it with love. That's the center of the Hail Mary. You know, um, uh, a friend of mine said that we we shouldn't we shouldn't go too fast on praying the rosary. JP two made that point as well. Don't don't have a hurried pace through the Hail Mary. Uh, and there's a, a priest friend of mine that once said you should treat the name of Jesus in the Hail Mary like a speed bump. <laughs> you know, slow down. You know, when you get to the name of Jesus, treat it like a speed bump. JP two said we should speak his name with love. You know, speak the name of Jesus with love. Uh, don't go too fast. I, I once attended the fastest rosary on earth. <laughs> I, I really did. I, I'm sure it was the fastest rosary on earth. It was like a nine minute rosary every day before mass. This group of people would pray the rosary. And it was like run into the races. It was like auction an auctioneer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee soul. I mean, it was like that fast. <laughs> they were just really going fast. Um, God bless them. They were praying the rosary when many people weren't. So I think that's a good thing. But God would invite them and all of us to slow down, especially in Jesus's name. Speak it with love. Uh, you know, I, I think of, you know, two lovers, you know, and they, they look into each other's eyes and they say each other's name. That's what we do over and over again, 50 times in our rosary praying, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We could speak his name with love. You know, another thing JP2 recommended, and we don't have to pray it this way, but there's some European countries that do it this way, where they will add a clause after the name of Jesus to connect every mystery to the, uh, every Hail Mary, connect every Hail Mary to the mystery that we're contemplating. So you could say, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus agonizing in the garden for the first sorrowful mystery, Hail Marys. Or you could say, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus changing water into wine at Cana for the second luminous mystery of the rosary. Or blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus risen from the dead. You know, and if you're ADHD in your spiritual life, and I could be this way sometimes, when, I, when I've prayed it this way, it does help me kind of focus that every time I come to the Hail Mary, I'm thinking of the mystery a little bit more. So I'll, that, that's another tip you can take away. You know, one other, one other thing uh, I would say is uh, we should treat the, the name of Jesus and the repetition of, of the Hail Mary. We should treat it not as a superficial mechanical exercise, but we should treat it as like a relationship. JP2 says, like, like the dynamic of love. You know, my, my wife and I, we've been married almost 21 years now. And we have many terms of endearment, like most couples do. But we have the same basic three words we say to each other all the time. I love you. And I've said those words to Beth countless times in our marriage. Sometimes I, I say those words to her when I'm on a date night. I can look her in the eye and say, I love you. Or I, I could be running out the door in the morning in a rush and say, I love you, honey, have a good day. Or I could whisper those words right before I fall asleep. I love you. 
I have said I love you to Beth thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And she's never been upset by all that repetition. She never goes, oh, can you come up with something original? I'm just tired of you repeating all these words. <laughs> no, repetition is a part of the language of love. And we as Catholics have a personal relationship, a deep friendship with Jesus Christ. And it's a wonderful thing in the rosary that we can repeat his holy name with love as lovers do. So think about this as we go through the rosary, you know, prayer after prayer, we enter into the praise of heaven and earth over the mystery of Jesus, Gabriel and Elizabeth in their words. Bead after bead, we, we ask Mary to intercede for us, to help us to say yes, like she did. And then hail Mary after hail Mary in this rosary, we affectionately repeat the name of our beloved. We say, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, so that the holy name of Jesus, when spoken with tender love, it really becomes the heartbeat of the entire rosary. Uh, I think right there, if, if that's all you do, you know, first, if you just come with a good intention, you've done something wonderful. You can offer up that rosary to God. You, you gave a good intention. If you spoke the words of the Hail Mary, the Our Father, the Glory Be, that's something beautiful, a gift you can still give to God. Even if you're distracted and your heart's not into it, you're still giving something to the Lord. But if you pray the Hail Mary sometimes, and maybe, you know, sometimes you're focusing on the mystery of the rosary and you could do that. You're thinking about the scene of Jesus's life. And other times, maybe you're just thinking about the prayer and you could be thinking about Gabriel and Elizabeth. That would be wonderful. But you know, I think at the most basic level, if all of us, whatever you're doing, and I think every rosary is a little bit different. Every personality is a little bit different. And and I often pray it myself in different ways where I'm thinking about the words, or I'm thinking about the mysteries. But the one thing I, I think we should all try to do is to focus on Jesus's name. Just simply speaking his name with love is something beautiful. Right? And, and it draws out our desire. We're speaking words of love to our beloved Savior. That alone is an incredible gift. Last couple tips I'll give you. These are a little bit more from Pope Benedict. One thing is we don't have to pray the rosary all at once. You could divide it up, like do a decade or two in the morning, a decade or two on the way home from work. You know, you, you can break it up, but you don't have to do it all the time. Pope Benedict uh, wrote about how he, he has too much of a restless spirit. He can't do it all at once. And so he'll do different mysteries at different times of the day. And if it's good enough for Pope Benedict, I think it should be good enough for us. Uh, the other thing is you can pray it, you know, in different times, in different ways. You know, sometimes you can do it in the middle of your work day. You just pause and say, I'm going to do a decade. Maybe you do it while you go for a walk or while you're exercising. Uh, maybe you do it in the car while you're driving or when you're in between things and you just have a little bit of space. Instead of pulling out your phone, you could pull out the rosary beads, you know, but you can really get this rosary in every day. If you just break it up that way, don't feel like you have to pray it all at once. You can pray it anywhere. Uh, you could do it while you're doing laundry, do it while you're doing dishes. So try to work it in. If you can't just sit down, I think it's best if you can sit down here before the Blessed Sacrament and pray a whole rosary. Amen. That's awesome. But maybe you have a, a life schedule, a season of life where that's just not possible. Don't let the perfect keep you from doing something good. You know, just pray it while you're on the treadmill. You can do that. That's fine. Uh, bring the rosary in to everyday life. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. i uh, give you a few tips on, on how to pray the rosary, how to incorporate it. If you've not prayed the rosary in a long time, or maybe you've never done it before, my last encouragement to you is just start and start small. Maybe start by doing just one decade, like the 10 Hail Marys at the beginning. Uh, maybe that's all you do. The Our Father, 10 Hail Marys and a Glory Be. And just do that every day. I challenge you. Do it every day for, for a month and see what happens. And I bet you'll find yourself wanting to add in a second decade and then eventually a third decade. And maybe over time, you can get the whole thing in. Don't feel overwhelmed that you have to start jumpstart the whole thing in your life. If that's not where you are and you want to just kind of gradually on-ramp, the Lord will be patient and he'll love that. Uh, give him that time. Just do something with the rosary every day. All of us should do something. Well, I hope this has been helpful. I've been drawing from this book that I wrote here called Praying the Rosary Like Never Before. Uh, and, and it walks through these tips I've been talking about, as well as reflections, biblical reflections on all 20 mysteries of the rosary. I hope this is helpful for you. My friends at the Napa Institute, uh, I, I'm, I'm praying for all of you. Please pray for me and pray for my wife and our eight children, our family life. We, could, we would appreciate it as well. Thanks so much and God bless.